one of the things that I, uh, I looked at was I started looking around, and most people know the power of life insurance, right? Don't like it, but I want to make sure if something happens to me, my family's taken care of. But what if you live? And here's what's crazy. The number one fear amongst baby boomers is not death. Death is a far number two, way down the list, number two percentage-wise. Number one is running out of money before they die, having a life where they don't have income. And it's going to happen, according to all the statistics, to about 75% of the population, right? It's mind-boggling. So what do I do without any income? That's why you see people now in their 70s as greeters at Walmart. You know, it's just like I got to figure out what to do because they never figured this stuff out in the beginning. So there is income insurance. Income insurance is is old. It's a 2,000-year-old approach to making sure you have money. Julius Caesar was the first one who created it. And here's what it was. They created a pool of money where the Kaiser, the soldier's going to go out. And everybody put their money in, and it was held by the government. And whoever came back, they split up that pool of money over time with annual payments. So the word annuity that we all have heard, the word annuity, is annual payments. Now you get annuities to pay you every month. But that process that's out there is one of the most successful opportunities for people to create an income. In other words, there's a stage in my life where you built, like you are. Mm -hmm. You're grow, 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 and you're growing up the mountain. You're saving, you're investing, and you're building it to a giant critical mass, to a jackpot. Mm -hmm. When you get to the top of the mountain, there's going to be a stage where you're not going to want to work. You probably will. Guys like you and I will always work. You don't have to work, and therefore you tend to work harder. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> I couldn't imagine not doing you know, it. It's yeah. just like I couldn't either. Yeah. Uh, you know, Steve Wynn's a dear friend of mine. He's 72 years old. He works harder now than any time I've known him. You know, just crazy. You know, uh, uh, T. Boone Pickens is a friend of mine. He's 86. He, when he was 68, he retired. He's a billionaire. He's made more money after coming out of retirement in the last 15 years than he did in the first 68 years, and he's having the time of his life, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to know you don't have to work. So when you get to that peak where you have enough money, mm -hmm. now you want to be able to ski down the mountain, enjoy your time with your family, do whatever you want to do, give your time, your energy, your capital, do whatever you want to do. That phase you need income for, and most people aren't planning for income. So you could be in a position where you built your assets up, your stock investments, your bonds, your real estate, and how fast can that drop by 50%, by 30%? We've seen it in every market. <laughs> About a nanosecond? Or Ray Dalio. Day? Yeah, Ray Dalio really says point blank. He said, whatever you invest in, most people invest in something they feel is their favorite. They think they know something about it. Mm -hmm. So he said, you're a real estate guy. You put all your money in real estate. And then you put all your money in stocks or you put it into commodities or whatever. He said, whatever investment you invest in, he said, mark my words, in your lifetime, there will be a day that category will go down 50 to 70%. He said, so the only way you protect against that is asset allocation, spreading out against many different baskets, not one. And the other way is you create an insurance policy that says, I'm guaranteed a certain income for life. So what you do is you take a percentage of your earning and you put it in an environment where it grows. And the only problem with that is, I heard annuities, and I was like, annuity to me is the most negative word. It's like I know. You think about some sleazy insurance sales. Yeah, exactly right. So you associate to it. Yeah. But here's what an annuity is. Uh, Bernanke. Bernanke, as you know, the head of the Fed, his top two investments were both annuities. Because I used to read these ads that say, you know, the, it's still marketing them. It says, uh, what does it say? It says, I hate annuities, and you should too. Yeah. And of course, you go to it, and it's a guy that's selling you stocks, yeah. right? And he says, oh, annuities, they have all these fees. And he's right. There's tons of horrible annuities, just like there's tons of negative mutual funds. There's tons of people who got fees everywhere. They take it every year. And the annuity side, there's a commission paid to a guy. He gets paid once. So, so uh, I want to be really clear. Annuities aren't a great product. Like mutual funds aren't a great product. The right annuity. The right investment is the right one. And that means you've got to be able to strip out all the crazy fees. You've got to know what you're getting. And for most people, that's complex. I'll give you a perfect example. A variable annuity, very popular annuity, is filled with fees. It's fees on top of fees. It's fees to be inside of the annuity, and then there's fees for a mutual fund on top of it. It's, it's a disaster. But there are types of annuities, like done properly, like these hybrid annuities, they call them, where it's tied to an index, meaning a stock market index. So here's how it works. You get the upside without the downside. If the stock market goes up, you get a percentage of that growth. If it goes down, you lose nothing. So, like, you think about my friend who's been out of the stock market for six years, and he's got nothing to show for it. I said to him, this would have been one of many different vehicles you could have easily done. And what's beautiful about these types of annuities when it's the right company, you want a company that's got the right rating. You want a company, these insurance companies, the good ones have been around 100 years, 200 years. They've been around since recessions, depressions, the, the 2008, and nothing's hit them. They're that strong. They've been around. That's all they do.